Israeli seas are being pounded by Hezbollah's rockets and missiles and drones. Where is the Iron Dome to protect Israeli cities from Hezbollah's missiles and rockets? I think I have an answer for you. I can tell you what Iron Dome is not and I think I can tell you why you don't see or hear from it these days. But before we get to that, allow me 10 seconds to speak in my native language to address my regular viewers. Azizan, شاید من هفته یکی دو تا ویدیو انگلیسی بذارم. اگه شما دیدی تایتل این ویدیو انگلیسیه، یورش کلیک نکن. من یک کانال دیگه درست کردم ویدیو انگلیسی میخوام بذارم. و هر وقت یه ویدیو انگلیسی از من دیدی مطمئن باش یه ساعت یا دو ساعت بعد یه ویدیو به زبان فارسی هم آپلود خواهم کرد. Guys and this channel that you're watching this video I upload videos that are spoken in a Farsi language, my native language. I have another channel that I will put the link to that channel in the comment section. I will pin it. It will be the first comment. Now let's get back to the Iron Dome. At this point, I think everyone knows that Iran is one of the major players in this war right now. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm just going to give you all some information that I've gathered from Iranian media, which is spoken in my native language and try to shed some light on this issue of the Iron Dome. If you all also follow the Middle East news and war in the Middle East as much as I do, you probably have noticed that rate of the missiles that have been landing into Israel that have been fired from Hezbollah or Lebanon or southern Lebanon have been increasing dramatic after second Iranian attack and I think it was October 1st. I have been keeping close eye on this and noticed that a lot of these missiles and drones that are being fired from Hezbollah, nowadays they all find the targets and they're not being intercepted. However, if you watch the Israeli news, they're just saying that we intercepted all of them. But if you look, there are a lot of videos here and there that you see the damages that they've done. And these missiles are not like those $500 missiles that they were coming from uh, Gaza. You know, they introduced the Iron Dome. They, they made the Iron Dome to compete with the rockets that they've been shooting at them from the Gaza. Hamas basically had these $500, $300, $400 rockets that you can guess they're not as powerful as the ballistic missiles or like rockets that are being made with the states. And they're really small and they don't even have a big, big warhead. But the importance of it is that they are very predictable. These rockets are not uh, maneuverable. They are very predictable. The path that they fly is very predictable. They don't fly that fast. And pretty much, I mean, as soon as they launch them, you can, you can predict where they're going to be and you can shoot them down. So that's why they came up with this Iron Dome. The Iron Dome has a radar that it detects these launches. And immediately, maybe a few seconds after the launches, it can predict where they go. And if they're going to land somewhere that is not populated, the Iron Dome just decides not to waste any ammunition and let them fall wherever they're going to fall. But if the trajectory is the way that they know that it's going to hit somewhere populated, they'll just launch a missile, sometimes maybe two missiles for each, each one of these rockets that they're coming uh, toward them and try to intercept them. And the success rate of that is, is pretty good. It was maybe 85%, 90% at the best actually with shooting two missiles at one of them at, at each one of those uh, $500 missiles now let's just look at these pictures there are these missiles that they're coming from Gaza from Hamas they were $300 $400 or $600 something like that for each one of those they shoot two missiles two iron dome uh, rockets or missiles or whatever to shoot them down okay these missiles they range from 60 or $70,000 up to $150,000 each one of them for each $500 that they Hamas spends, they have to spend somewhere between 100 grand to 250 grand to shoot it down. Now, I'm not a mathematician, but if you just look at the math, you realize where the problem is, right? Hamas resources are limited. They cannot make a lot of these and they have drones flying over there like all the time. Nowadays, that I don't even think they're capable of shooting any uh, rockets at the Israel. But before that, they had these drones going up and down, left and right, and they were just monitoring every inch of that land. So as soon as they detect any kind of movement, any launcher or anything, either they would just hit it right there, send a missile or something to hit that launcher right there. Or if they missed it, after they shot it, they would try to hit it right there. So it was kind of hard for them to launch a lot of these missiles at the same time anyway. Whatever they could launch, whatever they could throw at Israel, they could pretty much hit like 80-90% of them. But the story changes when you come to the Hezbollah especially after Iranian attack, like the second Iranian attack. Iranians were claiming that they hit a lot of these equipments from radars for the Iron Domes to the radars for Arrow 1, Arrow 2, Arrow 3 and David Sling. They actually claimed that they hit a lot of these equipments, radars or batteries. I mean, we don't know. Israelis are not coming out and saying, yeah, they already destroyed our stuff. But I think we can correctly come to this conclusion that after second Iranian attack, we can see sharp 
increase on the Hezbollah's missile that they're landing in Israeli cities, including the one drone that hit Netanyahu's house. And there are other videos that the, these drones are flying, uh, even they're going by these Apache helicopters and they're saying hi and they just go. So that's one theory that they just don't have them. They've been shot down. But the other thing that I think is more important, I think that's why you don't see that many of these uh, interceptions in the air anymore. It's because they ran out of the bullets. They ran out of the missiles to shoot these missiles down. Uh, le let me add this thing. They just designed this Iron Dome to shoot down these uh, very simple rockets that they're coming from Hamas. Iron Dome is not even designed to shoot down more sophisticated missiles that they're coming faster, that they have speeds of Mach 2, Mach 3, you know, it's just simply not designed to shoot those down. So even if they want to attempt to shoot them down, they're not succeeding. And now that they have limited resources to replace these missiles, I think they just make a decision, I don't know, not to shoot them down sometimes if they're like, if they know that it's hitting somewhere that, I don't know, maybe they're just money wise, they just calculating it. I really don't know, but what we can see that a lot of these missiles are coming and finding a target, including the attack that happened yesterday, Sunday, Sunday, November 24th, that according to Israeli media, Hezbollah launched like 250 drones and missiles at them and a lot of them landed, a lot of them. I found a lot of videos online that I, that if I put them up right here, my video will be flagged because the damages are just too extreme. The houses are destroyed. The cars are like mangled. Now the question comes, where is Iron Dome, right? The simple answer is the Iron Dome and missile defense system has been overwhelmed. And there is just not enough batteries and missiles to just go ahead and intercept this missile that they're coming at them. That is, I think, the most uh, logical answer to this question. Now, like I said, I'm a Persian and I speak Farsi fluently, okay? So I look at Iranian media and I see what can I gather from it. I try to just read out the bullshit and just go directly to the point. What I found the other day, it was just about a month ago. You know, everybody was speculating about the price of the missiles that Iranian used when they attacked Israel. These missiles are very sophisticated missiles. These are the missiles that if you want to purchase them from any country, if they were up for sale. I would assume they would go for 15, 20, 30 million dollars. They're like mid-range ballistic missiles. They're hypersonic with the maneuvering head. And as you guys could see in the videos, most of them found the target. They've been launched from Iran. They traveled like 2,000 or maybe 1,800 kilometers. And most of them now, some people say they hit them 90% of them, 98% of them. But what I saw, it was 180 missiles that they've been launched toward Israel. And I could just count with my own eyes in different videos about 80 or 90 hits. So I don't know, like you, you guys be the judge. They traveled like 1800 kilometer and they found their targets. So now let's get back to the price of them. I found this video the other day. I'm going to show it to you guys. This guy is a director of IRGC space and the uh, air force. So he's the guy in charge of making these missiles, shooting these missiles and stuff like that. So let's just hear from him himself. I'm going to put this video for you all. It's about 10 seconds. I'm going to come right back and just translate it to you guys. سلام موشک دوربرد می‌خوایم بسازیم 2000 کیلومتر. ما حدود 400000 دلار در میاد برام. میگم ما باید این موشک ها 100000 دلاره. بعضی 400000 ما 400000 دلاری شده دارم حساب می‌کنم. Okay. Basically what he said was the interviewer asked him about the price of these missiles. He said uh, the missiles that we are using here, or our missiles, the most expensive ones, the ones that just like, you know, uh, they are hypersonic, they have a maneuvering head, the most expensive one, top of the head, or maybe the ones that they didn't even use now. That's what, uh, maybe that's the one that he was talking about, the ones that they didn't even show up. He said 400 grand a pop. And also he said we have like the cheaper ones, like maybe Shahab 1, Shahab 2, Shahab 3s, that they're not hypersonic or they don't have a maneuvering uh, warhead. That's, but he didn't say, he just like the, the expensive one is 400 grand, the cheapest one is 100 grand. So they range from 100 grand to 300, uh, 400 grand. And that was just the ballistic missiles. Now I think you can get a better picture of the whole thing at why Israeli air defense system is not effective nowadays, you know, because there are going to be enough missiles shooting at them that they just simply cannot shoot back. They just... Each one of these systems, even the thought, okay, the thought they say is good, they're gonna, it's going to hit the target or whatever, they have one system in there. One system has six launchers. Each of these launchers, it has eight bullets in them, eight, eight, eight missiles, right? So it's 48 of them, 48. So if there are 400 missiles coming that way, and, and even if it's TAD missile, hit every one of them, like one shoot, one kill. Even if that's the case, you can shoot down 48 of them. What about the rest of them? And I think even deploying this system to the Israel right after the Iranian attack, it's the sign that 
probably some of those systems have been damaged and they did need these because if you look at it if there are like 400 missiles 300 missiles that they're coming at you these 48 missiles are not going to do them much but it's just something to be there it's better than nothing and let's just not forget that they only have limited amount of these tad missiles and they cost 10 million dollars a pop to shoot down a missile that only costs 400 grand at the most hezbollah has not fired one of those sophisticated missiles that iran shot at israel yet i don't know we don't know if they already have them some say even in iran when i'm just uh, monitoring the media they say they probably have some missiles that they're way more sophisticated than the stuff that they already they're using but the reason that they're not using is because they know they are being monitored and they're just finding a way to use them because they know if they use them once they're going to be hits right there like right maybe 10 minutes later so i think that's one of the reasons that you don't see some of those uh, advanced missiles being used against israel that that's probably one of the reasons but even with what they have they've been pretty effective these days it seems like that the iron dome and air defense system is non-existent these days like i said yesterday there was a massive attack i mean however israelis attack back but they do that all the time regardless it doesn't matter what matters is israeli cities are not safe anymore they're just not that is just a simple fact they shoot these drones and missiles and a lot of them get through like a lot of them it seems like that the iron dome and air defense system is just non-existent so i think these cheap rockets and missiles they just overwhelm the system and the system is just ineffective that's the simple answer to it if you all think i'm wrong and you have a different answer for this just write it down in the comment section and i do read all the comments idf has been trying and trying and trying for past few months really hard to stop hezbollah from firing missile into their northern territories at least northern territories but what they did in reality is they just made hezbollah to just expand it hezbollah's rockets are going further south they're targeting Haifa now, they're targeting Tel Aviv now, and the people are in Haifa and Tel Aviv are not even safe anymore. So basically what Israeli, the Israeli tactic did not work. Past few months that they've been fighting with Hezbollah, it just didn't work. They went there with the ground forces, they're trying to push Hezbollah back other side of the river. They're, they haven't been successful yet. What they're doing is just massive bombing south part of the Beirut, Dahia, but that's pretty much, that's all they do. They go over there like two miles, three miles, into the Lebanon, take a lot of casualties, they come right back. That is the dynamic of the war right now. It doesn't matter where you watch because like I say, I monitor a lot of channels. But what you don't see in Israeli channels, it's them coming out and giving you news that, okay, we conquered this land, we conquered that land. They go over there, they take some pictures, put the flag down, take some pictures and come right back. Because Hezbollah is just hitting them right back and they, they have to come back. They hit their tanks using the missiles that they captured from them back in 2006. They sent it back to Iran. Iran reverse engineered that missile, put its own name, Almas, and sent it right back to Hezbollah. Now they're using the same missile to kill Merkava tanks. So until that day that IDF and Israel can prevent Hezbollah from firing missiles at the, any, any city in the Israel, Haifa, Tel Aviv, northern parts, until that day, there is no victory. There is absolutely no victory. No matter how many of these leaders you kill, no matter how many of these uh, 2,000 pound bomb you drop in Dahia, it just doesn't matter. Until, until that day that you can prevent them from firing these missiles at you at the northern cities or Tel Aviv or Haifa or different cities, until that day, there is no victory. Did you just... You just can't come and say, we already killed that many people. Yeah, I mean, you did kill a lot of people, but what did you achieve? Your goal from going up there and attacking Hezbollah was to just prevent them from shooting at these cities. You haven't done that. There are 80, 90,000 people that they've been living up there. They're living in different cities down there and even they're getting hit down there. So here's the reality. Guys, on this channel that you're watching this video, I upload videos that are spoken in a Farsi language, my native language. But if you do decide that you want to subscribe to me, I have another channel that I will put the link to that channel in the comment section. I will pin it. It will be the first comment. When you go to the comment section, you can click on that and subscribe to that channel. I will upload this very video that you're watching right now in that channel as my first video. And I will keep making more videos about the conflict and make you guys updated. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the other side, other channel next video.